as always, as we come in, um, make sure you have everything you will need, make sure you're comfortable, and we'll start in five minutes. If you came from the last session and we learned about complex numbers, you might, and you didn't know before, you might know what this square root of negative one means, which is kind of cool. Some people are already asking, what are we gonna to do today? So obviously we'll wait for everyone else to um, talk about more about our outline today, but just to answer you all, um, we're gonna be talking about similarity and congruence in triangles today. Um, so obviously, you know, a lot of you probably at least have seen some problems like that before, um, but we're definitely going to dive into some harder problems um, for those of you who are more familiar. Someone's asking, what's with the tiger? Um, the tiger is actually this really cool logo that um, actually a fellow trainee student helped design. Um, well, the, first of all, the tiger is the trainee school mascot. Um, so that's why that's why the animal is a tiger. And then uh, with the tail, you can see it's, I don't know if some of you know this, but it's the golden ratio, um, which is, you know, one of the coolest, um, coolest things you can know about math. Uh, it's, you know, it's relevant for Fibonacci and a bunch of other things. Um, so that's the, you know, that's the idea behind the logo. And of course, we have our cool name at the bottom. Uh, and for those of you uh, if who want maybe like an explanation, uh, the first plus sign is supposed to be a T. The R, of course, is an R. Uh, root negative one, as we talked about uh, just in our last lecture, uh, not yesterday, but just the one for 8 to 12, uh, is I. Uh, N is N. Again, root negative one is I. The plus is a T. F of X, um, for some of you who know algebra, is technically uh, kind of like the Y coordinate. Um, so together it spells out Trinity. So a little nerdy, but I think it goes with our personalities. All right, shall we begin? Um, as always, we made a poll for today because it's really fun and you always, always like it. And we use some of your suggestions, which we hope is good. You can give us some suggestions for tomorrow's poll. It'll be our last poll, obviously, because tomorrow's our last day, if you don't know. And so give us some good suggestions. We'll use them. Which is cool. You'll get to see how over 100 people respond to your question. Yes, there's no Twitch uh, for streaming. I know. Uh, someone realized that in the last one, too. Uh, so we, we, we forgot to include that. Sorry, Floyd, I didn't hear you say something about Twitch. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Twitch here. Um, but we, we, we had someone. We got the same exact comment the last time. <laughs> I guess, I guess we weren't thinking much about gaming. It was more like, like, what, what shows and things like that. Yeah. That's Harry Potter. I would say my favorite book is Deathly Hollows. I think. Really? I think, yeah. La, la, I think la, in the last. Uh, webinar. It was uh, the Goblet of Fire one. Yep. Yeah, my favorite for I sure. Think, no, it was the Goblet of Fire and a Tide with Philosopher's Stone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Wait, I, Maya, you're the one who wrote the Harry Potter question, right? Yeah. I'm just curious. Um, normally people, like, at least in America, call it Sorcerer's Stone. So I'm just wondering, what's the inspiration for Philosopher's yeah. Stone? I wanted to sound fancy, because, like, you know, a lot of people here aren't from the U.S. So. Yeah, for people who don't know the story to this, apparently... It was called Philosopher's Stone in when she, when Rowling published it, I believe, in the UK. And then when she was trying to do stuff here, they basically told her just to change it to Sorcerer because people just need it to sound cooler. And I think also Philosophers has different connotations here than ah. in, around the world. Like here you think of like Aristotle and stuff. Right, right, right. Wait, what does it mean there then? I don't know. I just read something and it said something about that. Take my words with a grain of salt. Ah, I'm, I like this suggestion. Marvel, Marvel, Marvel or DC. This will definitely be on tomorrow's poll. You, you have a personal guarantee that it will be on tomorrow's poll. I like, I like that question. I will fight with people on it. That is a very, very interesting question. Well, I'm just, I'm just excited to see how bad DC gets beat. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know, man. They, they just cannot make a movie for their life. Mm -hmm. Like I, I just thought that I just thought that all superhero movies just were good. 
So I just basically just watched a ton of Marvel movies. And then I watched, I think, Man of Steel or Justice League or something. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, how do you just make something so bad? And they tried so hard to copy Marvel with Justice yeah. League, too. Favorite Avengers character. I like that one, too. They'll, all right. I'm seeing some Marvel fans here. I will definitely put in some Marvel questions. I, I, I could go on about Marvel. I, you know what? Wonder Woman was not bad. Oh, okay, that's true. That's true. Um, I'm excited for the second Wonder Woman movie. Uh, what yeah. is it called? WW84? Yeah. I'm so excited about Black Widow. Wait, Wind. no, no. What are you talking about? It's 1984. WW is for World War or something. Is it no, really? it's Wonder Woman 84. That's the name of the movie. Oh. Is it not? Wait. Uh, actually, no, that could be. That actually, could be. Could be. All right, like twenty more seconds to get in your answer. Does anyone know when is does Black Widow have a new date to come out? It's technically in the fall, although I highly doubt it. Yeah, that's so exciting. Someone's saying November twenty second. Fingers crossed. All right, I'm ending the poll. Getting your answers. Ooh. You were right. Uh, there we go. Very interesting. Although Goblet of Fire was pretty close. Very close. Very close. Goblet of Fire is good. It's really I see with the younger age group, we have more Disney Plus fans. Yeah. Uh, yeah, YouTube, YouTube also won the last time. Netflix was also second place last time mm-hmm. definitely as, as michael said more disney plus michael's a huge fan of disney plus bro winter winter, winter won last time also and we were surprised and we see it again i mean summer's close this time um but yeah win- winter i would go fully summer I, I, yeah. summer I mean for me it's i it's not really for the weather i guess it's actually i i find it too hot like i like the spring more but yeah. it's just I'll, I'll be honest no school if you guys chose winter, put your rationale in the chat. I'm really curious. Did yeah, you- actually, I'd, I'd be very interested to hear that. Yeah, because fall has the same vibes as winter. It's like cozy sweater and hot chocolate, but it's not freezing. I mean, I guess we might be biased because we're in New York and it gets really cold here. And maybe, Snow. yeah. And then you have a pet. Most people don't have a pet. Snow is snow is nice. It's just, it's not, it's most of the time it doesn't snow. So it's just cold. Yeah, we haven't had snow days for like two years, I think, for us, right? I was thinking we might never have a snow day again, because if we have a snow day, they could just switch to Zoom now. That's what our computer science person said. Oh, our teacher that's, said. that's actually very smart. Yeah, but that's it's so a lot fun. of work to set up for just one day off. Like, they have to make a whole schedule and Zoom link for them. And then siblings, most people, well, younger siblings. That's that was the same thing in the, in the last one. I thought maybe, like, I, I mean, I have three younger siblings, and I uh, I think Akash has the youngest. I've, one, I've won, yeah. You know, I've won too. Uh, I think last, I, I thought we last time uh, in the last webinar, it was the same thing. And we thought maybe uh, it would be different for this one just because you guys are a little younger than the than the last one. So, yeah. I, I definitely guess. expect like the younger class to have older siblings and the older class to have more younger siblings. It seems very similar. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. And thank you so much for all your suggestions for next time. We'll definitely take them into account. And we'll definitely have the Marvel stuff. I can promise you that. All right, Michael, talk to you. Hey everyone, so as Maya said, today we're gonna be talking about geometry. Um, And one of the things about similar and congruence triangles is that, you know, on the very entry level, it's pretty easy to understand, you know, what makes a triangle similar, what makes triangles congruent. But you know, as you look at some of the harder problems, they really, really get um, pretty creative with how you actually need to use them. So yeah, as the slide says, you know, geometry and math is a very important branch. Um, it's all about shapes, obviously, whether you're finding the area, volume, um, imposing coordinates. And as I said, it's really, you know, I think the branch that requires the most creativity when you're solving the problems. Um, Cause you don't have too many, you know, methods of solutions. And it's really just about finding the right one. Um, and you know, using and like knowing how to put them together um, to eventually get to the solution. So why don't we just dive into similarity and congruence?
So triangles are similar, or you know, that little squiggly line is another way of saying they're similar. Um, when they're basically just scaled up or scaled down versions of each other. So triangles that are similar have the following conditions. Either their, angle, uh, their angles are the same and their corresponding sides have the same ratio. So, you know, if you can just imagine any triangle you have and just scaling it by like, you know, two or by three, then you have a similar triangle, right? You know, you're keeping the same angles and the corresponding sides, what I mean by that is, you know, as I said, if you scale it up by two, then the corresponding sides have, a, have the same ratio, you know, one to two, right? Or if you're scaling up by three, then the corresponding sides of the ratio one to three. Um, so that's basically the two criteria for similar triangles. Um, if you guys remember yesterday, how we kind of talked about three, four, five, or two days ago, I guess, we talked about three, four, five triangles, and then a lot of people pointed out that it was a similar ratio, it was saying like six, eight, ten triangles. So for example, those two triangles are similar triangles. And so congruent triangles, or you know, the symbol of the square line above an equal sign, um, really means that they are the same exact triangle. So all congruent triangles are similar, but not all similar triangles are congruent. And triangles are congruent if they meet both of these conditions, right? So their angles are the same, just like with similar triangles, but the difference is that the sides are also the exact same, right? So really, when you're looking at congruent triangles, you can just imagine if you took one triangle, you know, rotate it some random way, you know, even, you know, even if they might look different, if I can show that all of their angles are the same and all of their sides are the same, then we know that they're congruent. So now we're gonna look a little bit into um, types of congruence. First, to answer some questions in the chat about what congruence versus similarity and like the difference, because I think a couple people are confused. It's that congruent means two triangles are exactly the same. The angles are the same and the side lengths are the same. There's basically nothing different about these two triangles at all. Um, similarity means they have the same angles, but one might be bigger, one might be smaller, and they're just scaled like one might have all the sides two times the size, one might have all the sides three times the size, and they're just in a ratio, the size of the triangles. But for both similarity and congruence, they have all the same angles, the two triangles you're talking about. Okay, great, yeah. Um, so there's a couple ways to identify uh, congruence. Um, uh, and so we have to we have to understand a couple of these. So um, one way we could do this is something called uh, uh, AAS or ASA, uh, which essentially says that the two triangles um, have uh, they, they they essentially share the uh, two two of their angles. So two of their angles are exactly the same, um, and one of their side lengths are the same. Um, and so, um, this, but understand that um, we, we, we have these two notations for a reason um, and, and they're, they're quite important differences. So for AAS, um, suppose that we said, um, uh, we're, we're referring to this so angle, this angle, and this side, right? That would correspond, sorry. Oh, you can't see my cursor. Yeah. Sorry. Here, do you want me to? Uh, sure. So, um, I mean, I guess um, the idea is that for angle, angle, side, we're essentially talking about like the order that we're we're looking at the angles and the sides. So we would say one angle is which is next to another angle, and then it's next to another side. Um, and then we we could have um, uh, ASA, which essentially says that the side length we're looking. At is is between the two angles that we're interested in, and so th th that's really important to recognize. Um, and SAS is essentially um, side angle side, which essentially says uh, one side is congruent, uh, two sides are congruent, and the the, the angle that's between them, uh, that, that 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 goes right between them, are also congruent. So they're they're the same in both triangles. Um, and finally, we have uh, SSS. Uh, which is essentially that all three sides uh, of the triangle are the same. Um, and so that, that, that would also tell us that um, two triangles are congruent. And finally, we have hypotenuse leg, which is really a, a really special case. Um, and it only applies to right triangles. Um, essentially, um, hypotenuse leg um, in, in right triangles just tells us that we need to know the hypotenuse uh, uh, and, and the legs of two triangles are the same. And one of the legs of two triangles are the same. And this is because... Um, uh, and this is precisely because of like the Pythagorean theorem that we talked about the other day. 
um, because there will be a unique solution to that. So the, the, remember that hypotenuse leg only really works uh, in right triangles. Um, but SSS works in all triangles. So if, if you have essentially uh, three sides uh, of two triangles that are the same, those triangles will be congruent. And if that description was just really confusing to you, don't worry at all. We're going to go into each thing individually. Um, okay, so we'll go through these. Yeah, as Maya said, we're going to go through these individually. Um, so we're, we're thinking about why does um, AAS and ASA work? Um, so uh, we're, our problem we're, we're considering is if two triangles share two angles and one side length, why are they congruent? Um, and so really, it's really important to think about these visually. Um, so perhaps I can make this a little bit more clear if we annotate. Um, so I will call this angle, sorry, angle one, uh, sorry, angle, Two, call this angle three and angle four. Okay, so notice that we said that angle two and angle four were exactly the same, and angle three and angle one are the same, and the side that, that that's contained between them are the same. Um, and so what's what's key to realize is that this is going to be similar um, because um, th th this definitely. Um, there's definitely like higher level mathematics that can be involved, but we can definitely look at this um, uh, just, uh, just based on the visual diagram. Um, so notice that if we know two of the angles, uh, we know the third because that's just 180 minus the two angles. Um, and the triangles are similar because they have uh, the same angles. And so we talked about this. Um, if they have all three uh, of the same angles, they're similar. Um, but when we say that, um, when we know that, when we say that one of the corresponding side lengths are, are the same, well then, um, then we know the, the rest of the side lengths also have to be equal because um, this actually goes into a little bit more complicated mathematics with trigonometry. Um, but essentially um, we say that we have that one of the corresponding side lengths um, is the same. And so we know that the rest of the side length ratios must be one to one since the angles are also one to one. Um, and so that's kind of the intuition and like you can also think about it in, in terms of like trying to draw another triangle that, that that has these three properties, meaning if I try and like extend either of these sides up um, or I try to shift it around, uh, if I try and shift the, 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 the top point um, any, any, anywhere else, um, our three, our, our, our properties essentially change. So the, the, our given angles and our uh, change and we can't have that. So that's kind of the intuition behind this. So I hope that makes sense to some, most of you. Basically what we're doing is we're trying to prove the triangles are similar and then we're proving that they're in the same ratio. So the two angles make you know that they're similar and then the same side length between those two angles make you know that, okay, they're similar and then a one-to-one -one ratio. So they're the same triangle. Um, Um, so now, now we want to provide some intuition on why um, SAS works, so side, angle, side. Um, and so we ask if two triangles share two side lengths and the angle between the sides, uh, essentially when we say share, we mean like if two triangles um, ha have exactly um, the same side lengths and, and, and angles here. So they, they share two side lengths and an angle. Why are they congruent? And so perhaps we can actually give you guys time, some time to think about this so that you can perhaps try and play around with moving some of the points and, and seeing what you get. Something you might want to think about is, okay, we know these angles are the same, and we know these side lengths are the same. Is there any way we could have made DF bigger than AC? If we wanted to want to make DF bigger than AC, maybe what would we have to do to angle E? Could we keep angle E the same?
I see a lot of you guys getting the right idea, which is really, really great because you knowing this, you even understanding this at your age, this is something you will learn freshman year, is so cool. And similarity, if you end up doing competitions in math out of school, comes up a lot. All right, we'll give you like one or two more minutes to think about this and then we'll talk about it. A lot of you getting are, are getting really the right idea, which is so cool. And some of you are even using trig, which you don't need to know trig to answer the question, but it's really cool that you know this. I learned trig last year. And it's because a caution voice taught me. Here we are. All right, so let's talk. What a lot of you said really correctly is if we made angle E, or if we wanted to make DF any bigger, we would have to make angle E bigger. Because if you have like, if you look and see me, I don't know if you can see me, if I spotlight my video, I think you can see me. But this is me, these are my hands, and they're like a certain size. So I can't change the length of my hands, and I can't really change the angle. But if I wanted to make the distance between my hands bigger, I would have to make the angle wider. And if I wanted to make it smaller, I'd have to make the angle smaller. So if we're keeping the size of our hands the same and the angle between them the same, we can't do anything about the distance in between them. And that's why these two triangles are the exact same triangle. And the fancy way to say it is by SAS, because we're saying, okay, there's a side, and then there's an angle, and then there's a side. There's a side, there's an angle, and then there's a side. And it's just basically a sentence saying what I just said to you. I saw some of you are doing trigonometry to explain it. I think a lot of you are using like um, laws of sines and cosines, but we can also just, just do it by saying like logically why it makes sense. All right. Let's talk about another one. So we have a triangle ABC and it has side lengths two, five, and six. And we have triangle DEF with, with side lengths 8, 20, and 24. Are they similar? Which means they have, they're the same angles but in different ratios. Are they congruent? Are they exact, the exact same triangle? Or neither? First, maybe draw out A, B, C, and DEF, and then maybe mark your similar, um, your congruent angles and your congruent sides and see what you think. And we'll give you a couple minutes to do that because I know some of you might know this and this might seem like not too hard, but you know, what we're teaching right now is what you learn like over a month of geometry class. So <laughs> for some people, it's going to take a lot longer. I see some of you guys are getting it, but we're still gonna give some people more time. Um, to people that are asking what trigonometry is, it's just basically the study of different angles and triangles. So if you think trig, Think triangles. So you're not going to learn that for a while. You'll probably learn like end of ninth grade or so. But some people already know it because some of the simpler rules, some people learn earlier. But you really don't need to know any trigonometry to know geometry. For us, we learned all these geometry rules way before we learned trigonometry rules in school. Uh, I just mentioned it because I see in the chat some people are describing their answers in trigonometry rather than like words which is totally a valid way of saying it. You know, you can use numbers or words to describe stuff, but it's definitely something you don't need to know at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
I, I would say uh, I, 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 we just mentioned trigonometry in general just because um, the, really the formal way you'll prove a lot of this stuff is through um, you know, trigonometry, but I, I would not worry about it whatsoever. Um, as long as you have like this sort of intuition between what congruent similar means, um, you, I think you'll be okay. And I think one thing I, I can provide a hint for this question is notice that we said that similar triangles are essentially scaled up versions of each other. Um, so perhaps it might be uh, worth trying if, if they're not congruent, can we find, um, can we find whether they're scaled? Um, exactly. So let's talk. So if we drew these triangles, we'd have a triangle side length 2, 5, and 6, and 8, 20, and 24. So right off the bat, we know they're not congruent. You know, a triangle with two five side lengths 2, 5, and 6, there's no way it's the same as the triangle with 8, 20, and 24. But what we can know is 8 equals 2 times 4, 20 equals 5 times 4, and 24 equals 6 times 4, which means Triangle ABC, if you multiply all the side lengths by four and just scale it up, which means just like enlarging it by four, you get DEF, which means they're similar. And this is like a little similar sign. And what we know about similar triangles, which can be helpful in different problems, is that in two similar triangles, ABC and DEF, the angles are the same. So the angle between two and five in, a in ABC is going to be the same as the angle eight and 20 in DEF which is super cool. So if you were doing a math problem, maybe you would be giving the side links and you might have to know something about the angles in them. And so, you know, maybe they'd say like, okay, here are your side links. Angle A is 20. What's angle D? And you'd be like, oh my goodness, it's 22. That's so cool because you can see they're in the same ratio. And yeah, so they're similar. And I saw a lot of people in the chat were also saying they're um, similar because they're a scaled up version of four. And that's pretty similar. That's just the same as what I said. They're similar and they're in a ratio of one to four. Um, let's just see if you understand that. Usually when, when, we, when we're looking for similar triangles, essentially you're looking um, if either you have really uh, three, if you know all three sides, just, just look for um, whether they're scaled up versions of each other. Um, but there's also other ways to do it, which we'll get into, um, such as if you have like, side lengths and angles and their scaled up versions, um, that, that, that'll also help you. Yeah. So let's talk about this one now. Are the two triangles below similar, congruent, or neither? I'll give, I'll give you a little less time to do this than last time, but you can still totally think about it. And as a reminder, similar just means they're the same triangle, but they're scaled, and congruent means they're the exact same triangle. So it seems like a lot of you guys are getting it. I'm seeing so many correct answers in the chat. They're similar. And if they are similar, what's their ratio? So what are they scaled by? Woohoo, you're all getting it. I'm getting like so many answers, I can't even see the names and they're all saying the exact same thing, which is like the coolest thing ever. It's so great that you guys know this already. You're such fast learners. All right, should we go to the next one? So exactly as you said, um, they're similar and because they're in a ratio of one to two. And because of that, we also know that they're in a ratio, this is a five, this is a 10. Um, what's kind of interesting is we didn't know all three side lengths for this, right? We didn't know that this was a five and this was a 10. It didn't have it written down. So if this wasn't a right triangle, would we be able to know that these two triangles are similar? If that question didn't make sense, we can rephrase it. Let's say I said this was 40, oh no, annotating isn't working. If I said this was 40 degrees, not 90, and this was 40 degrees. Or even if I didn't say, it. I mean, actually, if I didn't say this is 40 degrees, if these weren't, if we didn't know that these triangles were this, if we didn't know these were the same angle. Yeah, 
I think I'm being confusing. We're just not going to talk about the question I just asked. Well, I, I think, think it confuses everyone. I think it's a really, really good question. What Maya asked, um, I actually can help. I can, I can help you out a little bit, Maya. Yeah. Um, so it, it, even if these weren't 90 degrees, um, but we knew that they were the same angle. So like this angle was equal to this angle, but perhaps let's say it was greater than 90 degrees or it was less than 90 degrees. Notice that these, these triangles will still be similar. Um, just because like, I can't really like the, the ratio, I'm not really, uh, the, the ratio between these two sides will, will still stay the same. Um, and there, there's no way that I can, I can form them that, so that they're not similar. But I guess my like, important question that Maya asked is what if like, these two angles were uh, completely different, right? then we wouldn't be able to say they're similar um, without knowing the third side. Uh, because essentially like what I can have is I can, I can make this triangle really, really narrow and I can make, so I would make this, this angle close to zero and I can also make this angle uh, close to, uh, as close to 180 as I can get. Um, and they'll be totally like, they, they won't look at it. They, they won't be anywhere close to uh, similar just because they'll be very, very different. Their angles will be different. And so it, it's very important to recognize, um, you know, you know, if whether we can form new triangles or not. And, and a lot of this, I would say, a lot of the intuition can come between like experimenting, um, between like, oh, what if I change this? What if I change this angle a little bit? Um, this angle that I don't know, would that change something else? Right. And so that, that, that if you try and want, change one thing um, that you don't know, but it changes something that's a given that must be true, um, that's not good. And so that, that, that's sort of the thing that we want to look at. Exactly. And I see in the chat, a lot of you guys are saying, oh, it's good if they, these angles were the same, then um, it would be SAS, which is a really great way of applying what we just taught you, which is really cool. Um, just one thing to note too, like the things we taught you for um, um, congruence, uh, essentially congruence, like you can think of it as like similarity, um, because technically they are similar, but they're in similar in a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, so they're exactly the same. Um, but so all the things that we applied for congruence also apply to um, similarity. So if, 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 if um, not all of them, except SSS, I believe. Um, and you're, you're not really, you're not really, uh, you're, you're looking at really more ratios. Um, between uh, sides instead of whether they're similar. But if they're in a constant ratio, like that's a good sign. And the one additional one here um, is whether all the angles are the same for similarity. So we would call that AAA. Um, and that essentially gives us, um, you know, we, we can only form all triangles um, that have like the same distribution of angles um, will have like the same ratio. And I, I mean, th it takes, a, again, a bit of trigonometry to prove that statement, but uh, I wouldn't worry about that. Just know that, like, uh, how to identify, you know, when something is similar and when it's not. Great. So you guys have been really, really great at picking this up. And if you don't understand it, don't worry. You have so many more practice problems. Um, and so we're going to go on a break now for 10 minutes. Make sure to be back at about like 4, 401, and we'll start at 401 exactly. As always, don't know if you're here, so I don't know whether to wait for you. So just make sure to be back and just, you know, get water, walk around and all that stuff. Someone asked, would we be able to learn trig in the other class? So no, um, for, if you mean the other classes in the older class, the one for eight to 12, we did not talk about trig. I think we might've mentioned stuff with trig, but we didn't teach it. But in the break, if you want me to explain, should we say explain some basic trig for people that want to know it? Um, if you want to learn trick, you can definitely watch videos on YouTube too. Yeah, I, I, I think that that's like the best thing. Like they would be able to probably explain it in more depth than we would in a couple minutes. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that, um, you know, if you don't know it, then it may sound confusing. But like if you spend 10 minutes just watching some video, it'll make a lot of sense to you. Yeah. Um, so you definitely can, uh, you know, learn it yourself if you want to. Um, but also uh, keep in mind that you don't uh, need it for the stuff we're going to cover today. So, um, you know, don't, it's not a prerequisite by any means to understand this stuff. But, you know, if you are feeling curious and adventurous, uh, yeah, then go ahead. There's um, some great sources online for it. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of the stuff we're talking about, if it's new, definitely it can sound very, very scary and very intimidating. But really just like 
you know, exposing yourself to this stuff and watching videos and just being curious, well, you'll, you'll definitely like, at some point you'll be able to like, you know, you'll, it, some, something will click um, and, and you'll really be able to, um, you know, piece together, you know, uh, what each thing means and, and you'll really see the bigger picture. But I, I would definitely just do some like quick Google searches on trigonometry and watch some basic videos if you're really interested. Um, yeah. If you guys have other questions you want us to answer about this so far, and you're still here, you're not like walking around your room, not by the computer, we totally can. We have like five or so minutes. I'm going to stop the chair because I can't see the Q&A on the chair. Yeah. I mean, in general, if you guys have any general questions just for us, like let us know. Like this is the break, so we, we, we can cover just like about anything. All right. So two of our questions are, is it's one is about trig. So if you don't know trig, don't worry at all because this isn't gonna make sense for you, but you don't need to know trig. But if you need to know trig, um, the question is, is most of trig surrounding Soka Toa or are there many other topics in trig? And so for that question, most of trig is based off of Soka Toa, but there are a lot of applications to there, it. There, there are definitely like- Yeah, uh, so I, I, Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I would say like trig is like super, super useful in any sort of geometry. Like it's probably based around, like, as Maya said, like Soka Toa, but there's like a variety of things that we that that can that can be used. Like uh, just in the previous webinar with the grades eight through, eight through twelve, uh, we were talking about something called complex numbers and polar coordinates, uh, and so trig definitely shows up there. And as, as you get into like higher dimensional stuff, um, really dealing with you know different sort of objects, um, 3D objects, trig can come into a, in a play a lot. Like there's there's so many different like coordinate systems that you can use, like spherical, cylindrical. Um, and they all involve trig in some way, but that, that, that's definitely way, 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 way uh, further yeah. uh, down the line. Don't even worry. Like you may uh, probably you won't talk about like those, a lot of those coordinates in high school. Yeah. Don't think about it at all. Honestly, if you don't know it, don't worry. But the, um, trig, just take away that trig goes much, much farther than Soka Toa um, yeah. in terms of its applications. And then someone else asked what we're doing tomorrow. Um, tomorrow is the day I'm most excited for. We're learning about game theory, which is really cool. Game theory is basically saying, if given a situation, how do you know mathematically, like what choice to choose so that you end up best for you? Um, and there's different ways. It's basically studying, you know, it's kind of about how people think, but more so it's about people like making the best decision for them and how, if you know that someone else is going to make the best decision for them, how you are able to make this the depth the best decision for you as well. It's literally math behind games. And games can mean like games that we play like board games or more so like games as in like any situation where two people want something, two people have potentially a way to get it um, and how they like interact. And it's so exciting. I'm so excited for tomorrow. You guys should get really excited too. I would definitely say that's my favorite field of mathematics. Same. And it's cool because if you know like economics, if you know what that is, it's basically about like, yeah. um, it's game theory is kind of halfway between math and economics. I'm so excited for tomorrow. I would definitely like suggest you tune in maybe to one, maybe to bo even both webinars, just because like game theory, like it's very accessible to, uh, you know, your, your age and uh, as you, as you get older as well to almost everyone. And I, I, I would say this is probably the one thing that most high school students don't have access to learning in yeah. school. Um, me and Maya were lucky enough, Maya and I were lucky enough to, you know, be able to take a class this year offered by our school, but it was, uh, yeah, I would say it's definitely a, one of the most interesting fields of, uh, mathematics that I've seen. Yeah, totally. Um, and which was really cool because that means tomorrow you'll be learning something that most high schoolers don't even know. Like normally if you want to learn it, you have to know in college, which is like so long. It's like eight years from now for you. But so, it's really, it's really cool. yeah, it's so exciting. And so it means that we're going to be playing like a lot of interactive games too, all together and seeing like what you pick. And if you were to play this game again, what would you could pick to win every time, which is so exciting. I'm really, really excited, <laughs> in case you can't notice. I think it, we'll talk about some winning strategies in some games. So if you were like, oh, let's play a game with one of your friends, like you, you could definitely learn to win like every single time. Um, so Another question we got is what grades are you in? 
I'm going to be a junior next year, which means 11th grade. I'm going to be a senior next year, so 12th grade. Yeah, same here. I'm also a rising senior. I'm the young person. Um, do you have any other questions? Have you ever watched Young Sheldon? No, but I watch clips of it on Facebook when I'm bored. <laughs> I actually have watched Young Sheldon. Really? And, How is it? And Big Bang Theory. It, it, they're based on like the same thing. Like it's like a kid. It's a uh, like Big Bang Theory. Like, it's, it's, like well, yeah, same character. character. Yeah, yeah, same character. I I, I think it's, it's 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 interesting. I like it. I want to watch the Big Bang Theory, but it's not on. I think it's on like HB, like that new HBO thing or whatever. I don't have that. I was considering getting it just to watch Big Bang Theory because I've watched a few episodes here and there, um, but I haven't watched a lot of it. So I think we have like the DVD versions of it because um, like the actual physical parents, DVD. You know, my parents used to like watch it, so like I think, I think a long time ago. So I definitely I have it in my house. All right, another question is: Are you guys on sports teams? Um, I'm not on a sports team at school, but I used to do dance and I've been doing Taekwondo for the past couple of years and I compete in that, um, which I really like. Yeah, I would say one of my biggest passions is sports. I, I, I primarily, I, I run on the school's varsity track and field team. Um, so yeah, I mostly do sprints, but I, I love like almost like every, every sport like, that exists. Like I, like I would say like tennis, basketball, I play like all of it, like ping pong, like when I'm free. I, I really like to play that football. I, I, just whatever, whatever sport there is, I, I really like to play soccer. Yeah, I don't know. I just like being active. So, um, another question. Oh gosh, answer. Sorry. No, I just read this thing in the chat with uh, our panelist Austin. It's, it's essentially a challenging foil to a game of ping pong. Um, anyway. Well, first off, I'll say my first, my favorite two sports are math and chess. So that'll tell you something about me. Um, no, but uh, I don't play like seriously or anything like plays uh, in Maya. But um, I'll play with my friends sometimes. So I'll, I'll play basketball. Or, uh, Gosh, I, I, used, I used to, yeah, I played with Foyes. Um, let's see. We'll do. do Spike ball is not a sport, but I do. And it's pretty fun. <laughs> That's yeah, when we have free time. Spike ball. Yeah, when, when we had free time, then spike ball after school was pretty fun. Um, the next question is, do you all like memes? I like memes, but I'm not that educated in them. I deleted Reddit, so I'm very out of touch. I only know, like, the ones that are on TikTok, so. I wouldn't say, like, my, like, uh, my, I don't know, like, I, ha I, I like memes, but I, I, would, I don't think I would be, like, good at creating them. But I, I, I don't know, I would, I, would, I would definitely take a shot. I think it's interesting. Yeah. Akash, your thoughts on memes? I mean, if someone shows them to me, I guess I'll like it, but uh, I don't actively seek them out, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then the final one that I saw, I think just as you heard, was who's the captain of your math team? So what's cool is the four of us, me, Akash, Foyas, and Michael are the captains. We're all co-captains. So that's why we organized this. Yeah, and we would definitely like suggest. Uh, we would definitely like love like your feedback um, after this camp is done tomorrow, especially um, just to let us know how it went. Um, just so like if we hold it, uh, if we do a second one of these, we definitely like uh, love to improve on it in any way possible. Totally. All right, should we start up again? Um, yeah. Since we're starting up again, the questions you answer, anything else you write and ask questions we're not gonna answer. So just don't spam the chat with questions about us because we wanna be able to answer your questions about the math and those will be hidden if we don't see. Okay, so we're hoping everyone's back. Gave me an extra minute, so fingers crossed. Um, so now we're gonna go to the next slide. And this is another practicing of identification. And it says, if two triangles share two sides and one angle, but the angle is not between the sides, are the triangles congruent? So I advise, you know, drawing two triangles and then maybe seeing, can you make it so that the triangles aren't congruent? Can you make it so that they have two sides and an angle, but the third side isn't the same for both of them? 
Um, we'll give you a couple minutes to do that. Think about that, explore that, try as many options as you possibly can. So yeah, this isn't the same as SAS though, because the angle's not between them. Yeah, for this one, I would really, really, see, like even for any of these, like geometry is very, you know, of course, very visual. Like the whole idea is that we're studying shapes. Um, and so I would, I would highly, highly recommend just trying to draw different scenarios, seeing if it works, like Maya said. Um, and whether we, we can hold the, you know, whether, whether we can, you know, come up with, with two things that, 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 that solve this, that have the, uh, the property stated, but look completely different. Yeah. So we're going to give you like maybe five full minutes to do this just because drawing them is going to, you, you really should try to draw and try to see really if there's a way that they can't be. The so, same. yeah, one person but, is asking, like, so one person is asking, I think that, um, what does it mean like for the angle not to be between them? So like essentially like, uh, uh, oh yeah, you got it, fine. That was clear. So here are two triangles with the same sides. Yeah, essentially what it means is just like. But what if we say that this angle right here is the same? Could you draw these triangles to not be the same triangle? Yeah, what might be like, more helpful is if we set it like um, uh. Okay, here's a triangle. Let's just pretend these are touching. And this angle is the same. So if we had, and then of these, we're going to say this is a length and this is a length. This can be any length right here. That's the idea of it. Really, like, uh, essentially, we, we don't want the angle to be like between like the angle that, that, that between the purple and the blue line. Really, yeah. that, that, that's what we're saying. We want so, it to be one of the other two. Yeah. And so if we keep these two lines the same, we'll be keeping this angle the same. So could we move this line around to make a different triangle that isn't this one? Um, if you don't get this question right immediately, don't worry. And if you're not immediately sure what your answer is, don't worry at all either. Because it took me a while to figure it out too. The area does not have to be the same. Good question, Catherine. We're going to give you like a minute or two more and then we'll talk. I think I see a lot of people with great answers and it seems like a lot of people are not sure they're guessing. It's always great to guess. You'll never be penalized for guessing. So I really like the people that are saying their answers, even though they're not sure it's true because that takes a lot of confidence. Yeah, definitely. I would, I would say like the, the best way to learn from mathematics is really just like, and, and in general, is just definitely like making mistakes. Like, like if you're always, it's definitely like, you'll definitely learn a lot from, you know, a mistake and it'll just to give you like a lot more clear intuition. So making mistakes is always a good thing, I would say. Yeah, I know in the past I've made a mistake and then like never, I just pretended I didn't and then I never told anyone about it or asked any questions because I wanted to pretend I got the answer right. But then there was a similar question on the test. And since I got it wrong, I just pretended I didn't get it wrong. I didn't ask anyone. It was like, I got this wrong. How can I do it better? I didn't get that question on the test, which was really disappointing because I knew I didn't know it, but I didn't ask for help. So asking for help is really important. Yeah. So it, it'll just like making sure like it, it, like you definitely like understand it, like making mistakes. Um, 
if you, if you, if you don't, uh, you know, making mistakes just like helps you clear up your understanding if, if something is blurry. Um, and so, yeah, no, 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 that's uh, what I think. Yeah. All right. So we're going to talk about the answers. I'm going to clear my drawing. And just so everyone knows, the chat was literally split 50-50 on this. Like some people were like, yes, it's congruent. Some people were like, no, it isn't congruent. So if you weren't right, half of the people in this entire call weren't right either. So do not worry. Um, so the answer is no, they're not congruent. If we know this side is 20 and this side is 16, we, and this angle is 48, for example, and all these numbers are totally made up. They can be any numbers ever. You can see, as I think Poyas is drawing, that you can draw another um, line within the triangles that make it work. So you don't know for sure that two triangles are congruent if they have two sides next to each other, um, two sides next to each other, and then an angle next to that. Um, the idea is like um, that you can think of like we're holding like angle A constant, um, and we want to keep uh, angle C. Not angle C, no, sorry, uh, sides, uh, side that's denoted as C, so uh, the one between AB, um, and side A, which is uh, side denoted as A, which is uh, BC. Um, essentially, we're keeping those two the same, and like the angle is not um, between uh, these two sides, uh, because that would be this angle, so it's one of these. Um, yeah, exactly, so what Maya's drawing. So like, if you think about it, like you can think about this in terms of Pythag. Um, essentially, um, uh, essentially, like you're, you're, you can flip uh, this this side that's denoted as A with side side length A um, across this, this 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 vertical line, this perpendicular line to AC, and we'd have the same uh, we'd have the same side lengths, and it it would still um, it would still uh, maintain the same properties that we wanted it to have, sharing two sides and an angle that is not between the sides, um, but we get two completely different triangles. Um, and so perhaps you can think about like when, when would this be true, when, when this case might be true. Um, are there specific cases? Are there not? Um, and perhaps you can think about that. Um, but yeah, the, the, this, this shows that we, it, it's not always true. Yeah. Because we can form these two types of triangles. A good mnemonic device that I always used to remember it, but isn't exactly appropriate. So, you know, maybe don't say it to other people is that if you wanted to say what these congruence was, instead of saying like SAS, you would say angle A, S, S. And that's a bad word. And you would never want to like write a bad word on your math test, would you? So don't ever write that. Um, and so it's not congruence. Well, I'll just give you a minute to think about that. Um, all right, so let's go on to the next thing. This problem, as I said, was really hard. I think I got it wrong the first time I did it. So don't worry about it, but it's really cool to know now. So now we're gonna do a cool problem with this. So what we know about congruence and similarity and all that stuff. And this little symbol right here, does anyone know what this symbol means? You can put it in the chat. The quick refresher. I don't even think we ever mentioned it. Yeah, we, I think we did. Uh, We're Mike, seeing a, a yeah. few answers in the chat, but there's definitely um, yeah. a little bit of confusion, so it'd be great to go over it. Yeah. yeah, so that symbol means congruent. It means that they're the exact same triangles. So let's just mark out on this diagram together what we know about it, and then you guys can think about what congruency would say. Would we say, you know, SAS, AAS, SSS? So many options that you've already made. All right, so we said BA equals BC. So BA, oh no, I'm really not good at this. BA equals BC. And what's really cool is now we have an isosceles triangle. Do you guys know what's cool about the angles in an isosceles triangle? If you do, put it in the chat. I'm trying to see it. Yeah, we're getting some answers. Super great. 
All right, so exactly as a lot of people are saying, but if you don't know, I am going to leave. If you're seeing the Gosley's triangle, it means the two angles opposite the congruent sides are the same. So angle A is the same as angle C. Woo. All right, now MA equals MB. So we're gonna say MA equals MB. Now, what do we notice about triangle AMB? It has three of the same side lengths, right? Or no, two of the same side lengths, one different side length. So what type of triangle is it? Can you make these two things? Yeah, I'm seeing the chat a lot. It's isosceles. So we can say that this right here, oh, I need to draw. This right here is congruent to this angle. And so since we denoted this angle with this little indicator, I'm gonna do the same right here and say, okay, this is congruent. Okay, next, NB equals NC. So we'll go with this. We'll do a totally different color. And what do we notice about triangle B and C? Is it a cool type of triangle? If you know the type of triangle, yep. As I'm seeing in the chat, triangle B and C is also isosceles, which means this angle has to be the same as this angle, and we're so we're gonna mark them as congruent. Oh no, I'm so bad at this, guys. Okay, so that's about all we know about our triangles, right? Show that this triangle A and B is the same as this triangle, C, M, B. What congruences do we might wanna know? Oh, something else to note is that, that might be helpful as a hint, is that if this was angle X, if this was angle X, what would this angle right here be? Since triangles, the angles have to add up to 180. Yeah, I'm seeing it totally in the chat. So great. Um, it has to be 180 minus 2x. Same goes for here. This is x. This is x. This is 180 minus 2x. So it means, okay, these two triangles are the same. These two angles are the same. And maybe think about, okay, we know all this great stuff. How would you go about proving? Oh no, it's such a... How do you go about proving A and B is the same as C and B? Would you use SSS, SAS, um, SSA? Uh, no, AAS. <laughs> we don't want to use SSA. And this is a really, really difficult problem, honestly. So we're going to give you some time to do it. Yeah. So repeat the question. As some people in the chat asked, we're asking how to prove that these two angle, these two triangles are the exact same triangle. So A and B is the same as saying C and B. I can highlight them in a sec. But um, think about the different theorems we learned and the they're called postulates if you want to be really fancy um, about, you know, SSS, SAS. Um, ASA, all some really great ones that you could possibly use.
All right, so we're gonna give you about two more minutes and then we'll talk. I see multiple different ways we can solve this, by the way. Okay, let's talk. So if we're looking at these two triangles, uh, BAN and BCN, let's think about the things we know already. We know that AN is the same as BC, AB is the same as BC, so let's write that down. Oh no, okay, AB is the same as BC. And so we have one, one S, one side. So we have here and here. We also know that angle A equals angle C. So this is a little symbol for angle. And this symbol I'm using right in between, this means congruent, like we talked about there. The same. So we have an angle. So the two ways I'd either think about proving it are either um, ASA or SSA. So if we wanted to do SSA, or not SSA, what am I saying? We can't do SSA. What, <laughs> SSA is an apostolate. Um, if we wanted to do, let's just start with, um, S A A. We'd want to say that this angle right here is the same as this angle right here. And let's talk about why. I'm just going to remove all these annotations. That's enough. All right. So you said this. Ah, no, I'm going to draw. All right, this equals this, and this equals this. And we're like, okay, what are we going to do next? What I'd want to say is if we're doing these two triangles right here, I'd want to say A, S, or S, A, A. Same here, S, A, A. Right? So how are we going to do that? Well, we know that this angle right here equals this angle right here because we did some subtraction and we figured it out. We also know that this is one straight line right here. So something cool that we could say that we didn't talk about before is we can say if this is 180 minus 2x, this equals 180 minus 180 minus 2x because um, it's a straight line and these two angles have to add up to 180 because 180 degrees is a straight line. So we can call this 2x And this 2x. And thus, this angle right here equals this angle right here. So we'll call this angle B, M, C. Oh, I changed my green. And that's the same as saying angle B, N, A. And we're talking about an angle here. All right, cool. 
So we have a side, an angle, and an angle equals a side, an angle, and an angle. So that means that by S A A, the two triangles are the same, they're congruent. Um, you could also have done it in different ways. You could have also done it with um, ASA because we know this angle equals this angle and this angle equals this angle. And if we just call this angle right here, let's do a different color, is Y. We know these two angles added up equals X plus Y. And these two angles added up equals X plus Y. So we also know this angle equals this angle, and it could have been A, S, A equals A, S, A. So let's just write those both down. So for geometry and congruence, there's always like a lot of ways to solve it. And you just have to pick the one you want most. And what you're trying to do when you're looking at these problems is seeing, okay, I know some stuff. What else would I need to know to make a congruence thing? Here we knew that, okay, we had a side and an angle. So what else would we want to know? We'd probably want to know another angle. We could have also learned, known another side, but we would want to make sure that um, it wasn't this side. It, ha it can't be ASS. It ha would have to be this side. If we wanted to do it that side, we could have just said basically that this triangle equals this triangle, this tri or I'm going to clear all my annotations are getting confusing. This triangle is the same as this triangle because they had the same angles here and here. And the side was the same. So by A, S, A, they're the same, which means these two are the same. These are all the same. And this is, oh no. And this is a third thing. Let's give that one three dashes. And so if we know NC equals MA, then MA plus MN equals NC plus MN. There were so many ways you could have done this. Um, I'm going to give you a couple minutes to think about that because it was probably really confusing what I just said. So um, make sure, think about it, maybe see if you can redraw it and redo it. So I'll give you a couple minutes if you didn't get it immediately to looking at this drawing. Mark again what we know and try to prove their congruence. Um, if you guys have any really specific chats or questions, put them in the chat, but not like, I'm so confused how did you do this? That's not gonna be helpful because I don't have time to re explain. But if you can say, you know, how did you know this equal this? I can totally answer that. Hey Maya, there's this question in the chat that says, um, or in the QA rather, it says, is SAA the same as AAS? So um, to me, that's worth just clarifying. S A A. Yeah, so like how that's the same as A A S. A A. And the answer is yes, they are the same. Because if we said this side, to so this side, this angle, and this angle, right? And so saying S A A is just saying the order we're doing it. So we're just saying this side equals this side. Um, this angle equals this angle, and this angle equals this angle. Or more. Oh, we chose the other angles. We did these angles. I don't want to confuse anyone. There. Um, but if you just want to do it the other way, rather than saying S A A. S A A, we could have just said them in the other order, right? Because a triangle, you can start at any point. So we could say A A S, A A S, they're the exact same thing. What would have been different is S A A is not the same as S or A S A, right? Because, you know, it's not between two similar angles. Although we can talk about how similar SAA and ASA actually are in the future. So I'm going to give you about two more minutes to try to solve it again yourself. 
um, if you didn't get it before. But as a reminder, we have so many people on this call that if you send me your solution and paragraphs about it in the chat, we don't, we don't all have time to answer every single one of you. So if you send it to us and we don't have time to review it, we're sorry. Um, if you don't understand this all, I'm seeing, it doesn't, don't worry. Um, we'll be doing more patents problems and you're not going to need to know this until you're way into high school. I'm going to give you like three more minutes to do this because this problem is really, really difficult. So I'm now just going to rewrite on this what we know. We know this. This equals this, this equals this, this equals this, so this equals this, you know, this equals this. These like dashes I'm just drawing are just a way of denoting what they mean. So this equals this. Um, and then what else can you know from this? Um, someone asked what the weird equals means. We mentioned in the beginning, but this weird equals just means congruent. It means they're the same. And some people are making observations about other things that are similar. Yeah, um, we could make a lot of different congruences. All right, we're gonna give you till 4.33 Eastern time, and then we're gonna go move on. And if you didn't understand this fully, do not worry one little bit. All right, let's talk. So this question, if it was difficult for you, um, as always, we're posting this video on YouTube. So we highly suggest you'll skip to this point. You'll see I spent a lot of time marking timestamps in the YouTube video so you can easily skip to see like what we're on at what time. And then just look at my explanation again, see if that makes sense, and then try to do the problem again yourself. 
Um, but if you still don't understand it after that, don't worry. We're going to be doing more practice problems now. We'll have practice problems for homework, and they'll all be totally great. And you really don't need to know this for a couple of years, at least. So it could be helpful to know if you do competitions and stuff or do math have a school, but it's not necessary at all. So let's talk about another problem because we spent a lot of time on this problem. Here is just like a fancy way of doing it. And um, here we proved it by AAS. But we just talked about how many incredible ways we could have proved it. We could have proved it basically in any way, AAS, um, ASA, SAS, SSS, anything we want. I feel like I'm just saying random letters. <laughs> they all are postulates, I promise. <laughs> all right, so here's a new one. And this one hint, is about similarity. So maybe draw the two different similar triangles here. But we know here's the diagram and here are some links. This is three, this is two, and we'll even draw in some angles that we know. We're gonna say this angle is an angle, and we're gonna say this is a right angle, and this is a right angle. I would so, suggest, um, since, since, since we know that um, similar triangles have like the same ratios on their side, I would definitely um, try setting up some sort of like ratio or proportion um, with things we wanna find, and perhaps that can help you as well. Yeah, so your hint is this is a similar triangle problem um, because maybe you could even think what postulate made them similar. We're going to give you like a couple minutes to work on this, so don't worry. It might be helpful to draw these two triangles separately. I'll just show them right here. Maybe up here. This is not to scale, so don't judge my drawing. As always, do you have questions? Put them in the chat, but only like specific questions. I'm seeing some of the great answers here. That's so great. Um, but we're going to also give some people time because this is a difficult question. What we're covering today is pretty difficult. It's high school level stuff. So it might take a long time to get. All right, we're going to give you till 4.39 Eastern time. Maybe if you guys want and you're already done, you could think about what this length is and what this length is and, you know, what postulates we know similarity to and all that. You can chat your answers here totally, but um, we might not be have time to check it. We have people here responding to questions. I don't know if you see like the two blank squares on the screen, but Austin, Laura, and Francis Cohen, which is really, really great. But we still don't have time to like check every single one of your answers because we have so many people on this call. But if you write your answers, it's a good way of us knowing that you're done, but you totally don't have to. Love seeing all these great answers, and I also love seeing people 
guessing. All right, so let's talk. It's like 4.39. Oh no. Seems like a lot of you are getting it in the chat. So. Yeah. So what we know is that these two triangles are similar because they have two of the same angles, uh, which means their third angle is similar because this angle is just 180 minus these two angles. And so they're scaled up versions of themselves. So if this one has a side of three and this one has a side of 30, they're in a one to 10 ratio which means if this side has a, um, a length of two, this side has to be 10 times two, which equals 20. And notice, notice that, like, I, I guess we can think about expanding this a little longer, um, perhaps like, um, just like a, as like a corollary, like you, you guys know, like from yesterday that we, we can solve this, um, the side length of the smaller triangle, uh, the last side length using Pythag. Um, so I think that's root 13. Um, but I think what's really important to notice is that it's much easier to show like that the, once we show that these, um, these triangles are similar, um, and we find like, oh, this is 20, notice that like we don't have to do like Pythag again on, on this triangle with like 30 squared plus 20 squared. We could just, we could just scale it by two and get 10 times root 13 at this, uh, side length. So in some ways, it's kind of like a shortcut, and it's just about choosing like the most efficient method for finding all three side lengths, even though it wasn't part of the problem. Um, I think it's a really interesting extension to, to know. Totally, because adding 30 squared and 20 squared could take a while. But if you were in a time crunch, you could just do 3 squared plus 30, 2 squared, square root that, and multiply by 10. Um, all right, let's go on to our next problem. I need to mouse. Okay. So this symbol right here. Does anyone know what that symbol means? If you do, put it in the chat. We're seeing some really good answers. Yeah. It's so funny because we're getting all these answers super fast, but they're all saying the exact same thing. And so it almost looks like the names are changing rather than the answers. Yeah. So what a lot of people are saying, which is correct. If this means similar, if you can look here, this little squiggly with the equal sign under it meant congruent, which meant same. And then this, this without the equal sign under it means similar, which means they're the same triangle, but they're just in a different ratio. And so here we see ABC is similar to DEF. So let's look at this. It means ABC is similar to DEF. And how I'm saying this, how I'm like pointing to it in the order ABC and DEF is really important as well because triangles are named in a certain order. Triangles are named so that if you look at two that are next to each other, AB, for example, oh no, draw. If you look AB, DF, we can see it means that AB is in a ratio with DF, like they're the same corresponding side. So AB and um, DE, sorry, not DE. Same goes for BC and EF. BC corresponds with EF. And finally, ABC corresponds with DF. So AC corresponds with DF. Okay, so we know these are in the same, some sort of ratio. We know they're similar, so we know this angle corresponds with this angle. This angle corresponds with this angle, obviously, because they both say 72. And finally, this angle corresponds with this angle. And we also know that this is some scaled version of this. Yep. So we need to find, based on that, we know this angle, this um, length, we need to find this length right here. Yeah, I would highly suggest, like, if you want, like, trying to, like, redraw it um, so that, like, their orientations are the same. Um, and so I can explain what, what I mean by that. So, like, instead of, like, like, this is very hard. It might be a little hard to see, like, oh, which, which sides correspond to which. Um, but like a quick redrawing based on like how like the letters are formatted, like Maya said, uh, is going to be really helpful down the line. So like C corresponds uh, to F in this diagram. So we'll put like F right here. B corresponds to E. So we'll put E up there. And then uh, A corresponds to D. 
right? And then you could just fill in all the rest. So that's 72, that's here's 15, uh, and that's X. And so now it might just be a little bit uh, easier to see. And so I, I it, when problems get uh, definitely a lot more complex, like it's really nice to like redraw these things. Totally. All right. So I'll give you about two more minutes to solve this problem and then we'll go on to the next one. I'm seeing so many great answers in the chat. Amazing. Wow, super great. Okay, let's talk. We know that they're in a ratio and based on the fact that this corresponds with this, we know they're in a two to one ratio because 30 divided by 15 is two. So every length on this triangle is double this triangle. Because of that, we know, okay, 36 is double X. So 36 over two equals X. And just like I saw so incredibly in the chat, 36 over two equals 18. Woo! And so that's your answer, x equals 18. If you want to see the whole written form of that, look right here. And if you look, this angle, this notation is basically saying BC corresponds with EF, and they're in some sort of ratio. That's what this um, symbol means. Same with AB corresponds with ED in a ratio. BC is double EF. So AB is two times DE, which means DE is 18. And that's exactly what I said, but in some pretty nice written format. All right, I think we're gonna do one or two more problems and then we'll wrap up. Here, difficult problem. Um, I'm gonna, oh no, I do this every time, guys. Okay, let's just do that to specify. So here we're trying to find out what X is. What your hints for this problem is that we're talking about similar triangles and something that might be helpful is drawing these triangles separately. So we have A, Y, B. Oh no, that's not an A. And this is 17 and 16. And then we have y, h, b. This is x. Here are the angles. And this side length is 16 plus 22 which equals 38. So we'll give you a couple minutes to figure out what you think this is. Again, yeah, the hint is that they're similar triangles. So I, I, I would, yeah. Yeah, the hint is similar triangles. And the other hint is you're not gonna get the nicest number ever. Yeah. Um, if you don't wanna calculate the number, Maybe just write out like what it would be, like what, you, what calculation you would do to get it. We'll give you three or so minutes for this. I'm seeing some great answers, some great guesses in the chat. Some of you are getting like the precise number, which is great. I would have been way too lazy to do that. This 
I'm so great. You guys pick this up so fast. I'm like proud for you. This is something you probably learned maybe in like ninth grade. So. And over the course of like a month, like you don't learn about similarity and all the different postulates in the same day. You learn about like each one a different day. And so the fact that you all know this and picked it up so fast is like the coolest thing ever. All right, we're going to talk in one minute. <laughs> it's an annoying number, and so I saw someone say like the number and then ish, because I didn't feel like doing the calculations, which is probably what I would have done. And just because you got like a really weird number doesn't mean you're wrong. It is a really weird number, is your answer. All right, so let's talk. We know that this side is in the same ratio to this side as this side is to this side. So first we're gonna find out the ratio between this side and this side. So to find that, we'll say 38. Hmm. Literally, you guys have to stop me. I do this every time, 38 over 16. E equals 19 eighths, and that's like a really annoying number, but we're just going to deal with that. You could also could have totally done that in decimals, but I'm just going to do it in mixed fractions. Oh, um, not mixed fractions, improper fractions. So anyway, we know every side length in this is 19 over 8 times what this is. So we're going to say 17 times 19.8 equals 19 over 8 is x. And I believe you get 40 and 3 eighths or 40.375. I'm gonna give you a couple minutes, like a minute to think about that. Yeah. Um, if you don't understand it, try to think through the logic of what we did. If you have any specific questions, as always, put your specific questions in the chat or the Q&A, uh, or we'll answer them aloud, or we'll have someone answer it. Yeah, some people do this with the proportions, where they basically said this side, or this side to this side, equals this side to this side, where you get, um, this is probably how they in school, but you say 16, over 38 so this side to this side equals 17 over x and that's true because you're just saying okay the proportion from this to this is the same as the proportion from this to this because we know they're all in the same proportion and then you could cross multiply and basically get the same answer where you'd say x times 16 equals 38 times 7 so um x seventeen and you'd get the same thing you get thirty eight times seventeen over sixteen equals x, which will give you the exact same answer. Oh, it looks like our final Captain Michael's here. I'm gonna promote him to a panelist. Okay, so we're gonna just like look at the final problem. I just wanna see if it is fast and if not, we're just gonna wrap up because I don't wanna hold you over. Oh, here. A fancy way of saying it. Then look, we got the exact same answer. All right, so this triangle looks like it would take over five minutes, this answer. 
But look at these two great problems. Problems four and five are gonna be your homework problems for tonight. And as always, they'll be on your website. So, just to wrap up, you guys got this all so, so fast. It's like really crazy what you just learned today. I'm like, I'm in awe of you. And then as a reminder, as always, click on YouTube to rewatch this. I really suggest that you rewatch the answer to problem one, because I know a lot of you were having a lot of trouble with that. And I think my explanation might've been a little confusing too. So please just like, you'll have a time stamp on the video that really says problem one starts. I think it was problem one. Maybe it was the one before that, but um, you can go see what, how to, um, sorry, the task confused, confusing me. You can go see how to solve it. If you didn't get it already, your homework will be posted on the website and posted in the description of the YouTube. You will also get an email with it, but it might be bounced back, so you might not get an email with it. Finally, um, tomorrow, as we kind of talked about in the chat, we're going to be learning about game theory, which we're so excited about, and we're going to be playing some fun games together, and we're going to be using some of your poll suggestions, and it's going to be really fun. Very sadly, as we've gotten a lot of questions about, tomorrow is our last day. No. Um, we will have two sessions as always tomorrow and they'll be both on game theory so they will be about slightly different things the first session will be a little bit harder and the second session will be a little easier but if you want to come to this session and then watch the other section online afterwards i'm sure if you understood this session tomorrow you'll be able to learn a lot from the next session and the hard session that's normally from one to three won't really be that hard which is really really cool so you'll even be able to like do the hard session for eighth to twelfth graders which is insane. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for coming as always. Do we yeah. have anything else to say? Yeah, I mean, if you haven't, like, if you, if, you, if you didn't particularly understand anything in this lecture, again, like, I'll just repeat what Maya said, like, definitely, like, check out, like, the YouTube uh, webinar so that you can work through it. Um, I think the most part is really just, like, understanding it and being able to apply it. Um, and so I think just going through it slowly. Um, yeah, if you, if you have any questions, just a email us at, at, at our, at, at our at, we have a, we have an email, trinmacnyc at gmail.com. Uh, I can put it in the chat. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, definitely feel free to reach out or if you, yeah, anything at all. Yeah, we hope you're enjoying this. Um, people are asking when the video will be uploaded. I normally try to get them up by like eight or nine tonight, our time, Eastern time. Around like, like three, three to four hours. Yeah. yeah, it just, they take a while to compile and then like download and then upload. So yeah, that's the only restriction. And I'm going to be my mom's birthday tonight. So it'll be at dinner. So like, these videos are going to gonna be up for, these videos are going to be up forever. We're not, we're not right. going to take them down. So yeah. So they'll definitely be up by late tonight and tomorrow. So you can see them anytime. All right. Thank you so much for coming guys. Thank you guys. All right. Thanks everyone. Thanks, see you tomorrow. Thank you.